It was in the process of talking to Universal Studios, who are my partners in Tech War, and seeking recommendations for who would do the Tech War game, that Intercorp's name came up. And when we researched that, we found that Intercorp was the best company to handle the Tech War game. Intercorp, Capstone, is the best game company to do Tech War because they are the most inventive and they have the head of the company who's a man with not only great enthusiasm, but he's willing to put money into his enthusiasm to go to the cutting edge. When we had our conversations about the game, I said, here's what I would like to do. And all I had was fantasy. They, of course, were, had the nuts and bolts. And I was swept along with Lee Rothschild's enthusiasm and his people's ability to make that enthusiasm real. I'm going to go ahead and guess that a lot of you kids only know about Tech War through the infamously bad game that I'm about to play. Oddly enough, I'm pretty sure that I didn't even know that this game existed until I saw Civvy's video on it a couple of years back, but I was very aware of the tech books and the syndicated TV show back in the early 90s. Tech War originated as a series of novels and was the brainchild of a man named William Shatner, who is popularly known as the one and only Captain James T. Kirk. Well, not only. Shatner came up with the idea for the first Tech War novel in the middle of a break during filming of Star Trek V. Combining elements of the two major TV shows that Shatner had starred in previously, Star Trek and TJ Hooker, Tech War is a sci-fi police adventure series in which a disgraced former cop has been pulled out of cryostasis in order to help battle threats to the greater Los Angeles area. No, not like that. The titular tech is a kind of microchip that induces drug-like effects where people can tap into a simulated reality, something that the series eventually evolves into a shared experience by multiple users, which is referred to as the Matrix. No, not like that. Tech is essentially the stand-in for hard drugs in general, making the series a lot easier to sell as sci-fi, softcore copaganda. I know you kids might find it easy to make fun of Shatner these days, but back in 1989 when the first novel came out, William Shatner creating a brand new sci-fi series was fucking huge. He was still a big, big name in the sci-fi circuits at the time. Imagine the reaction of the Harry Potter fandom if Daniel Radcliffe announced that he was writing a completely original fantasy series. Shatner saw the potential for multimedia marketing with the premise, and expanded the series into a comic book that was published by Marvel, the aforementioned syndicated television show, and... <sighs> this game. I'm not sure who approached who with the idea of adapting the series into a PC game. There's honestly not a whole lot on the internet about the development of Tech War, so I'm not gonna speculate. The most I've been able to find is this interview with Shatner and the Capstone devs from what seems like a late night news broadcast, and what's kind of interesting about it is how earnest Shatner seems about the development of the game. He speaks pretty genuinely on not understanding the methodology behind game development, and how he discovered that there's so much more involved than one would expect. It's a fun watch, I've put a link in the description to the video and the channel that I found it on. Shatner is pretty pretty candid about how he doesn't play games, but had someone leading him through the experience so he could understand how it looked and would feel, and he expressed some eerily prescient thoughts on where gaming could head, and just, look, Shatner gets a lot of grief. And you know, some of it earned, some of it just because he's an odd duck, but he's a really creative, really talented, really interesting individual who just happens to be kind of abrasive with too much of an ego for his own good sometimes. Please don't block me on Twitter, Bill. I actually really like Star Trek V. 
But all roads lead to here, to Tech War, or more specifically, William Shatner's Tech War, as it says on the box, which draws inspiration and aesthetics from the TV adaptation of the series. Going into making this video, I could sense a deep anticipation for this from the retro shooter community. Like, there's, there's definitely a sense of mystique and curiosity surrounding Tech War. I fully believe that a big part of that interest comes from the video that Civi made a few years ago. Uh, I didn't even know that this game fucking existed until I saw that video, and I was thoroughly astonished as he peeled back layer after layer, and I marveled at how strange and downright frustrating the game appeared to be. Gamers see videos that resurface old janky trash like Tech War, and they immediately want to know more, especially when not a lot of YouTubers play games like this out of the preservation of their own sanity. But since I'm not one of those YouTubers, I decided to play through this whole game twice and then make a video on it. Of course, Tech War isn't just readily available for anyone to go and buy and download from a digital storefront like Steam or Epic. <laughs> Oh no, this is Abandonware in its purest form, kids. I had to track down the game files and download them, but not only that, I ran it through a source port for the game since it runs on the build engine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you... You heard that right. This is Ken Silverman's build engine. So I downloaded Build GDX, which is a super, super handy source port for multiple build engine games, including... <laughs> And Tech War plays super smooth running through it. Uh, except for the skybox, which looks all stretched out and weird, and... I tried running the game on a couple of different rendering modes that Build GDX offers, so that the skybox would show up better in my game footage, but my recording software didn't really like those other rendering modes so much, so this is how it'd be, kids. However, somehow, the fucking cutscenes aren't included in the game files that are out in the wild of the internet through various abandonware sites. Playing the game without seeing those gorgeous FMV sequences was absolutely out of the question for me, but I couldn't find the cutscenes by themselves to download, so I had to go directly to the source. I bought a copy of Tech War off of eBay, I ripped the cutscene files from the disc, threw them into my game folder, and now all the brilliantly compressed FMV cutscenes play straight through Build GDX. Not through DOSBox though, for some reason, but I... I didn't futz around with DOSBox very much for this playthrough. So with that, and without further ado, it's time to buckle up, come out of cryostasis, and dive into the confusion that is Tech War. The game starts off with a horribly compressed intro video that is essentially the opening credits of the TV show, followed by another intro in which Shatner gives us the basics of how tech works. I'll keep it short and simple. Tech chip, tech headset. Tech user. Tech fancy. Tantalizing. But only for a while. For here are some tech realities. Addiction. Criminal penalties. Neural damage. Death. Simple enough? And then the game... Wait... The game shows us the game being loaded into a home computer. Wait, hold on a second. Am I playing the game right now? Or am I playing a construct in which the game is being loaded and played. Build Engine can't do room over room, but I guess it can do game within a game. Anyways, after the second intro, we get a third intro in glorious mid-90s CGI, showing our player character being taken out of cryosleep, which then moves into Shatner, playing his character of Walter Bascom from the TV show, giving us the rundown as to why we've been released from ICE. Long story short is that the big name drug lords, uh, oh sorry, the tech dealers, oh they're not called that either, tech lords. They're called Tech Lords because... Fuck, I don't know. But all the tech lords are banding together in order to broadcast the Matrix on a wider scale and get everyone addicted to tech, which is probably not how that works. But I'm here to play a shitty first-person shooter, not to question what's going on, so I'm gonna accept whatever they tell me. Once Shatner is done talking, we're dropped into what is essentially a level select screen. There are seven tech lords that we need to take down one way or another, dead or alive. And if you make the mistake of playing this game, I recommend going in order from left to right, just as the Founding Fathers intended. Now, I'm not gonna go through each of these missions one by one and talk about the details of the level design and mission objectives in great detail, because the confounding and somehow comforting bit about Tech War is that literally nothing about the level design matters in this game. Not in the fucking slightest. You could play through any of these in any order at any time, however you want, even though it does feel like the difficulty, what little difficulty there is, slowly ramps up as you move from one Tech Lord mission to the next, left to right. But believe me when I say that the level design in Tech War, the game design, the 
The design, in quotation marks, is some of the most well-intentioned yet confused design that I have ever seen in any game I have ever played. It is astounding just how meandering and inept and completely unprofessional this entire game is. I know we've all built up capstone in our heads like the LJN of first-person shooters, but there is a big, big difference between being told about capstone and experiencing experiencing capstone. So to really drive home the highlights here, we're going to take a tour of the first mission, Marty Dollar, because playing the first mission is basically playing the entire game, well up to a certain point. And then once we've covered that, then I can do a highlight reel of the rest of the game. All right, kids, from here on out, we're going to have a time of things. So starting off here at the loading screen, I'm going to click on our first target, Marty Dollar, and that will bring us to one of the chat's great little FMV sequences. I'm uptown, and I just saw Marty Dollar. Get down here and help me bring him in. You start near Midtown and work your way through the area. And then we're dropped into... This has got to be one of the most jarring introductions to a game I've ever seen in my whole fucking life. All right, real quick, let's look at the hub. Up here is a timer telling you how long you've been playing, which is far as I know, does fuck all for the gameplay, as well as a score counter, which also does jack shit and has no effect on the game. Down here is your health, consciousness, and ammo counters. Health is health, ammo is ammo, but that yellow consciousness meter really confounds me. According to the manual, consciousness is how conscious you are, and if it drops down all the way, you black out. But I haven't ever observed what makes that meter drop down, so I have no idea what affects it, or what effect it has on gameplay if you black out. And that being noted, where the hell are we? Well, this is the subway hub. Every mission, no matter which tech lord you choose, you'll start here in the subway, or a, a variation of the subway scene here. From this point, you'll get onto the subway train and ride it to the destination you need to be at in order to track down the specific tech lord you'll be chasing. But the subway is... The hub is... My god, to start off with, the civilian AI is stuck somewhere between atrocious and cursed. Look at these two completely identical women. They just walk over here behind the security guard and stop, and then all three are just staring at me. This happens so many times throughout the game, not just here, and I don't even understand how random bits of code could come together like this to produce such an uncanny effect. Next, we have to deal with the absurdity of our protagonist. So when we walk into the restroom over here, we... Oh, Jesus Christ. This is what you kids wanted me to play. You wanted this shit. Okay, so ignoring Mr. I'm too cool to take off my suit while I shit with no door, we enter the restroom to take a look at our protagonist in the mirror. I've dubbed him the Tech Romancer because only a title that fucking cool would befit a man suited up like this. But we need to address the perspective here. First off, our point of view does not line up with the reflection in the mirror. Our eyesight, if you notice, is set way down low, like, 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 belt buckle low, which means that anytime you walk up close to anyone in this game, due to the perspective, the Techromancer appears to be only four feet tall. On top of that, if you draw your weapon while facing the mirror, you'll notice the gun that we're holding is directly out in front of us, but also not lined up with the mirror's reflection. This is so fucking off-putting that I feel like I'm experiencing an A24 horror film already. Getting on the train, there's a subway station guard who constantly paces around, eyes on us, and a homeless guy with a sign that says, will work for tech. One thing I really want to give Capstone credit for is that they know how to populate the game with little details that make it feel really, really real. Like the graffiti you see when the train doors open up that says, trust no one. Not gonna lie, this game feels lived in. It feels almost tangible. It makes a lot of sense considering that after their collapse as a game company, Capstone would eventually become a company called VR Tech, which according to Wikipedia, provided first person build outs of new construction condominiums using the build engine. Consider Considering what I'm seeing here, yeah, I believe it. Okay, but back to the subway for a hot second. Now, if you look over here at the token booth, you can open the door and step inside, where you'll discover a few clips for your pistol, which is all well and good uh, to stock up on ammunition, but if you pay attention here, at every subway stop is something called a genetic security checkpoint, which is really the mask for where we're going to load in a new level. Stepping through, you'll see that your ammo count goes from full to not as full. This is because the security points will strip you of any collected weapons or ammunition you've picked up in the levels before getting 
on the subway again. Which means that if you're running around, maybe you grab a cool new laser gun which instantly jibs enemies, or even a bazooka. <sighs> yes, there's a fucking bazooka in Tech War. And then you step through the security point to go back to the subway. You have now lost all of those weapons, and will have to collect them all over again at your next stop. Not only are you essentially pistol starting every mission, you're constantly being forced to pistol start at every stop you take. So, like, why is there ammunition in the subway token booths if you can't even carry it with you into the next map? There is an option in Build GDX to be able to keep your weapons when going through security checks, but for the sake of authenticity, I kept that option turned off for this video. Now, let's look at our first stop here. You leave the subway station, there's a couple of people walking around, in including this one dude who's apparently ice skating along. That's a common bug. Or feature, I don't know. But you'll see a lot of civilians moving around with no walk cycle animation playing. Sometimes if you just stand around, the civilians will end up walking themselves into patterns that can't actually be explained or they'll just stop and stare at you like this. I'm telling you, this game is cursed. We're downtown in the city, there's some buses driving around the streets, which is basically only one block, and on the backs of the buses are some tech goons who are just waiting to pass by so they can take a few pot shots at you. I should probably quickly explain about drawing your weapon and how NPCs in the world react to this. Basically, there is enemy AI and civilian AI. There's three types of enemies to look out for. Tech goons, your average, ordinary, regular enemies who are gonna start shooting at you no matter what. Androids, which look like regular civilians but make a weird beeping noise as they get closer and will explode if they get too close to you, and holograms, which I'll get to in a second. Tech goons will always be aggroed whether your weapon is drawn or not, but civilians will only react negatively to your presence if you have your weapon out and ready. Left click the mouse to bring it out, right click to put it away. One of the few benefits to your gun being holstered is being able to walk around inside buildings with heavy security. Because if you have your weapon out and you start firing, chances are that security will see you as a threat and open fire, which they will keep doing unless you either run away or shoot back. There is a stun gun in your arsenal at all times, which can be used as a non-lethal option. Handy if there are civilians surrounding you during the firefight. But aside from getting yelled at by Shatner in between levels, there's literally no consequences to taking out civilians if they step into the crossfire. If anything, having to deal with security guards is simply more annoying than it is threatening. No, you know what is actually threatening? The goddamn buses downtown. They're on an automated route. They never slow, they never stop, and they don't do anything other than drive in circles. So if you somehow aren't paying attention and you walk into the street and step in front of them, it is a one hit kill and you are just a pile of jibs on the ground afterward. No joke, you get insta-jibbed. And you know what? So do the civilians. What's even worse is that sometimes if you're running around a level where there are moving vehicles, you'll hear the sound of a vehicle crushing a civilian. And if you were somehow trying to avoid civilian casualties to get Shatner's approval at the end of the mission, this counts as a civilian death and you will get yelled at for it. The buses kill more people in this game than we do. Anyways, so our objective is to track down Marty Dollar in this mission. Easy enough. First, we're gonna get shot at from down this alleyway and then we'll round the corner into a leather-bound blonde who starts shooting at us. You'll see a lot of blonde women in leather shooting at you in this game. That, that also happened a lot in video games back in the 90s. There were a lot of villainous blonde women dressed in black leather. I think there's a kink in there somewhere, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Anyways, take out the leather babe and- What? That, that's what I, that's what I decided to call them. Leather babes. What are you looking at me like that for? Take out the leather babe and she drops a red keycard. Now, if you've played literally any first-person shooter ever, you'll already know that the color-coded keycards are for unlocking new areas and making progression. So we're gonna pick that up and go find where we need to use it. Fortunately, we don't have to look far because in this building over here, we're gonna find a red keypad, take out a couple of goons and a business attire leather babe, and now we have a blue keycard. Of course, a bus jibs a civilian as soon as we step outside, but that's not our fault. Here you can see that I activated a secret back door into what I think 
think it's a science museum, but the guards in the museum had been watching me shooting goons through the windows earlier, so they're already aggroed and shooting at me as soon as I walk in to collect a couple of weapons and then get the hell out. The blue key card is used over here at the bank, but as we walk in, you'll notice there's a strange fellow shooting at us, but he's transparent. This is a holographic decoy that looks exactly like the tech lord we're currently after in this specific mission, and as long as you don't literally walk into it, it's pretty much completely harmless. The only purpose that it has here is for you to draw your pistol and shoot at it, which would aggro the security guards, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go up the stairs and use the blue key card to access the vault and grab the flamer, which is easily the single worst flamethrower I've ever seen in a game. You literally have to get within melee distance for it to have any effect whatsoever, and even then, you're not 100% sure if it's working properly. Although, you can set panes of glass on fire with the flamer, so I guess that's pretty cool. It's- I swear to god, this is a horror game. This is- this is a cursed game. I got kind of tired of having to deal with security here, so I busted out the Orlo, my favorite gun in the game, and <laughs> well, if there's absolutely zero consequences for shooting things, I'm gonna shoot things, all right? Okay, so at this point, you'd think that we should find the tech lord here and take him out, considering we found both key cards and we have used them. Well, if this was any other game, then yeah, we'd go find the tech lord here on this map and go kill him. Except, he's not here on this map. What the game doesn't really communicate is that each mission has multiple maps, meaning multiple stops along the subway line. Depending on the mission, the tech lord could be at any one of those stops. So for the Marty Dollar mission, this map is only stop number one, and Marty Dollar isn't here. So we need to head back to the subway station, losing all of our weapons at the security checkpoint, mind you. We'll board the train and we'll head to the next stop to see if we can find Marty. You can even see here on this handy little map which stop you're at just in case you get lost. We've got an entirely new map here, along with new civilians, weapons to find, and areas to explore. Now, if you look over here on the right, you'll notice that we still have our red and blue key cards, as well as a handy little device I found in the science museum that increases the accuracy of one of our default pistols. So maybe the first map we stopped at wasn't a waste of time after all. Maybe the first map was just for us to be able to grab the necessary key cards for unlocking doors and making progress throughout the mission. Except there's another blue key card right up here in this building. Yep, it's just sitting there. I, I, I can't even pick it up. It's just it's it's just another it's just another blue key card. I already have a blue key card. I don't I don't need another one. Why is this here? Back to finding Marty Dollar. There's an interesting glowing beam of light over here underneath this overpass, which is weird. Maybe it's just for a fact, but no, you walk through it and it turns out to be a motherfucking teleport beam that drops you into the middle of some hidden cache of weapons surrounded by guards. I, I just, what the fuck is this giant teleporter beam doing standing here in the middle of the city? It's not even hidden or anything. It's just, it's just begging for someone to walk through. And if the civilians walk through it, they don't teleport. Only you do. Down here, there's our first example of how inconsistent tech where it is with force fields. We'll see more of them later, and I'll point them out, but this one just needs to be shot in order to drop it so you can enter the room and pick up supplies. You'd think that there was a switch that would turn it off, but no, you just you just have to shoot it. Of course, it does explode when you do this, and for some reason when you walk through the doorway after you blow up the force field, it still hurts you. I don't understand. As we're forced into combat with the guards, we're given another blue key card. This guy drops a blue key card. Oh, and we get the bazooka. That's that's pretty neato. If you haven't already picked up on this sweet little inconsistency, I'll spell it out for you. Tech War doesn't have smart mission or map design. Now, a moment ago, I did praise how lived in this world looks, and I'll stand by that. But the design of the areas, of the maps, does not lean into good or even entertaining gameplay. I have found three blue key cards so far. Three. In any other game, there would be one. I would find it. I would use it. And then on the next mission, I would have to find all new colored key cards. Not here. Not with Tech War. There's another red key card that I find up in a Stinky's bar, which is all flashing lights and leather babes. And I'm able to walk across the bar top like it doesn't even exist. And, and the red key card is just sitting idly in a booth. God Please, why is this happening? I eventually find this map's red keypad in a room with pool tables, and using that leads me along a path to the blue keypad, which opens the door to Marty Dollar. So I kill him, and... Marty Dollar is out of the way, but couldn't you have been more careful? The body count keeps rising, and it's harder and harder to justify it. We're not the killers. They are. Try to remember that. There are your consequences for indiscriminately killing civilians, by the way. Nothing actually comes out of this in-game. You just get yelled at by Shatner for 30 seconds, and then you're dumped back into the mission selection screen, and you get to move on to the next mission. And that's it. That's the game. No, 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 seriously, that's it. That is the entire game. 
go ahead, go try it out. Go click on literally any tech lord. Go give it a whirl. Now, of course, you're going to find yourself going to new locations, new maps, see new sites, find new weapons, lose those weapons all over again because you have to go back and forth with the checkpoints, but the gist is essentially the same. Take the subway train across two or three different stops. Search throughout each one for the red and blue key cards that you'll need to unlock the tech lord's personal lair. Eventually find the tech lord. Kill the tech lord. Every stop is going to have a red and blue key card, or, or at least one of them. Maybe you'll find the red card at the first stop. Maybe you'll find the blue card at the first stop. Maybe you'll find both at the first stop. I don't know. I didn't really do a whole lot of experimentation and exploration with each location to figure out just how many of these goddamn useless key cards there are. Making things even more confusing is that while you need both key cards to access the Tech Lord's lair in most levels, you don't always need to do so. One of the Tech Lords only requires the red key card, even though you pick up both red and blue during the mission. And another Tech Lord doesn't even require both if you can somehow cheese the blue door and draw his goons out of his office, in which case they open the door for you and you can slip in without having the right card. Still, it's a mind bogglingly confusing decision to have all of the levels littered with key cards. As though the developers knew that their maps were obtuse bullshit and didn't want to have to actually create interesting pathfinding, so they just kind of tossed these out there, figuring players would find one somewhere, somehow. If you're not entirely sold on that being the case, let's look at the auto map. There isn't one. There is a map, it's just not an auto map the way we know it. Auto maps generate the map as you go through the level, allowing you to remember where you are based on where you've been. This game just has a map. There's two layouts you can cycle through, a vector graphic overlay and a fully textured version of the map. If you rely on the overlay and pay attention to all the little lines, then you'll be able to see trigger plates, hidden doors, little alcoves that mean secrets, everything. You don't need pathfinding. It's already been found for you. There is little to no effort thrown into guiding the player along any kind of gameplay loop. You're just existing in this game. You go through at your own pace, shoot a bunch of things, eventually find one of two key cards, open up some doors, take down a tech lord, go back to business. The true trick, the really sneaky trick of this game, is trying to discern just how the fuck any of this shit actually works. Let's go back to the electrical force field in the Marty Dollar mission. There's another one like it in the Dallas DeMarco mission. Well, like, it's six of them, actually. And you get past them by shooting them, just like in the Marty mission. However, in mission three, Carlisle Rossi, there's a big ass force field that's in the way of where you need to go in order to find the Tech Lord. You can tell he's back behind it because there's what looks like an office on the map back there, but you can't pass through it and you can't shoot it. There's a secret door that lets you get around it, but the point is that this force field doesn't adhere to the rules the game has established up to this point. It can't be shot, it can't be passed through. Okay, neat, fine, that's a weird trick to pull, but it gets worse in mission 5. Sunny Hakuri, activating the blue keypad in the map where the tech lord is, lowers a wall to reveal a giant force field protecting a teleport ring which will take you to your target, but the force field doesn't blow up when you shoot it. Going by that logic, it makes sense that there has to be a way to go around and find a hidden door so you can bypass the force field, right? No, you just have to walk through the force field. Doesn't even hurt you, you just, you just have to walk through it. There is no goddamn logic to half of this motherfucking game. In the same mission, there are rail car tracks around the edge of the map, and of of course, anywhere else in the game, if you step on the rail car tracks, you get electrified and you die instantly. For some reason, here, you can drop down and run along the tracks. And if for some reason you haven't already found the red and blue key cards by this point in the mission, you'll absolutely have to run along the tracks and search for the cards. This game establishes semi-solid rules of engagement and exploration and then follows none of them. What point is there in finding multiple weapon types if you're just going to lose them whenever you go back and forth through the subway security? Tech goons only drop ammo for your standard issue pistol, and that dispatches enemies just as quick as you need, so there's really no point in trying to find better guns on each map. On top of that, there are so, so many chances where you could get accidentally soft lock if you happen to step through the wrong door at the wrong time. See, the game loves to use trigger plates to open up goon closets and surprise you, but then the hidden door will close again by itself. So let's say you see on the map that there's a secret room just off to the side, and you pass by, and the trigger plate opens it. If you step through into that room for any reason and stay in there, the door could shut behind you with no way to open it again, because the trigger plate is on the outside, and the use key doesn't activate the door. This isn't a super frequent occurrence during the bulk of the game, more like something that can happen a lot in the end game. But the fact that you can get softlocked at 
all just because of a hidden room you try to explore is absolutely fucking unforgivable. There's also water that can hurt you? Down here in this fountain, if you jump inside to grab the ammo, you'll find your health quickly being drained away because the water in the fountain is fucking uh, poisonous for some reason. And then this mission, where you can go underwater while exploring an area on the coastline, if you stray too far into the ocean waters, you start to take damage? It's so fucking weird. You can go underwater here, but you can't be underwater out here? It doesn't make any goddamn sense. Tech War, in a lot of ways, feels like an amateur jazz album. There's a lot of riffing on similar themes, a lot of familiar instruments at play, but the band isn't all on the same tempo. There's no underlying structure to keep everything held together, so you just kind of end up playing the same notes over and over, but in different variations or different keys. I mean, look at this. Look at this. The AI for the NPCs basically devolves into the same movements as an old Windows screensaver. Move forward until you hit a solid object, then turn at a different angle and continue walking. Sometimes stop in place, but otherwise keep trying to move forward. But if you trap them in a tight enough space, they'll just spin in place until they either find a way out or get aggroed to attack you. You know, the more I think about it, the more it occurs to me that Capstone probably understood that they had a very lightweight game on their hands. That would explain why they don't have the traditional level structure where you need to search for the color-coded keys and then unlock the color-coded doors and then you're done. No, no in, in Instead, they pad the game out by delivering multiple maps as multiple stops within a single mission, creating confusion and chaos for the players they blindly feel their way through the dark in order to find the keys and the target that they're after. Or maybe Capstone didn't feel like this was padding. Maybe they felt like this was well and truly good satisfying content to meander through somewhat realistic futuristic cityscapes in search of digital drug dealers. Who knows? More to the point, who cares? In a way, I do kind of care. There's something here, something strange, something odd, and as I mentioned already, something cursed. I'm fascinated with this game on a technical level because it seems to be intentionally making all the wrong decisions while still attempting to be enticing. It's like they put up a giant do not play sign while giggling seductively, ducking in and daring the player to come play anyway. Up until this point, being the end of the seven Tech Lord missions, Tech War has been a confounding, confusing, yet somehow charming piece of jank that doesn't understand first-person shooters. It really does feel more like an interactive screensaver with all the elements of gameplay that you would expect of a game like this, but absolutely none of the depth or enjoyment. At no point does Tech War ever come together with all of its instruments and feel like the entire band is playing in the same mindset. There is no cohesive hold to be found here. And you know what? If that was all there was to Tech War, it would remain an oddity, a feather in Capstone's proverbial cap, a true what the hell is this kind of experience. Except that's not all there is to Tech War. So you might have noticed down here in the corner throughout the course of the video, there are these symbols that you collect as you take down the Tech Lords. Each symbol corresponds to the Tech Lord we picked it up from. So once we have all seven symbols, we unlock the final mission, the Matrix. Okay, so I'm gonna put up as many photosensitivity warnings on this as possible because the Matrix is one of the single most headache-inducing, epilepsy-inducing things I have ever seen in any media ever. I'm not susceptible to flashing lights in the slightest, but I couldn't play through the Matrix for more than 20 minutes at a time without needing to take a break because I could feel the strain on my eyes and in my head. I'm gonna use as little footage of this as possible and try to get through this next section as quickly as possible because, frankly, there isn't a whole lot about the Matrix to discuss, but what there is to discuss is, well... Alright kids, you ready for this? Good, because I guarantee that you're you are not ready for this. The Matrix is hands down one of the single worst experiences I have ever had in any game ever. The whole thing is a series of interconnected mazes bound together by portals in which you have to navigate hallways full of flashing lights and imagery that looks like William Gibson's fever-induced nightmare. You're dropped into it without any kind of warning or intro from Shatner, and it has gameplay mechanics that are unlike anything we've experienced in the game so far. This is the watered-down version of System Shock Cyberspace. We're basically swimming through the digital ether, moving up and down, facing opponents above and below us floating through staticky nothingness. Here, we're no longer in possession of any of the weapons we've had before, but instead, we've been gifted some kind of power glove, a power glove that doesn't even fire until we pick up some red ammunition orbs, so it's doubly confusing. And all around you are these strange security orbs that float about, some of them firing energy balls at you, some of them swarming in close to chomp you with their teeth, some of them completely invisible, and you only know that they're even there because you can hear them firing. What we have to do in here is go through each area and activate a number of switches that look like concentric yellow circles. Activating all of these opens a security gate that grants passage to what I'm thinking 
is an access node. We'll place one of the seven symbols we've gathered from the tech lords in each of the nodes, and once we found them all, we're promptly dumped out of the matrix and back into the real world. I cannot stress how confusing this whole thing is. Outside of being given zero explanation for what we're supposed to do, we just have absolutely no idea of what we're supposed to do. Cannot stress enough just how fucking confusing this whole thing is. There's a, there, there's a fucking maze made out of blue cubes where you have to go up and down and across in a 3D space. There's a, a, a red light maze of corridors where if you go down the wrong corridor, you'll cross a trigger plate that will wall you off and trap you and thusly soft lock you. you. You remember how earlier I said that Tech War has a problem with soft locking the player in hidden rooms? Well, this is what I was talking about. The number of hidden rooms and offshoots in the Matrix, which are all based on trigger plate doors, is astounding. There's a route where you are required to go through a virus infested area and as you do two doors will open as you cross a trigger plate and then you have to choose which way to go if you choose the wrong path the door closes behind you and you're stuck in the room some of the rooms are infested with a virus in such a way that they will do damage to you just by being in the environment and if you're not prepared for that you'll die really quickly and lose a lot of progress if you haven't been quick saving in fact there are simply areas of the matrix that will deal damage to you just from walking through them but you have to go through them in order to progress so you're faced with the prospect of constantly taking damage and or dying, with the looming threat of being softlocked by any of the numerous trigger plate doors which may or may not have something valuable or necessary inside, and the potential consequence of either a migraine or an epileptic fit due to the constantly flashing environment which has zero visual consistency, so trying to find your way through it might just be easier if you close your fucking eyes. The Matrix is pain. It is pain and death and frustration and anger where you're constantly dying or getting trapped. My first playthrough of Tech War was done during a live stream for my 1k subscriber special, and I think I lasted 15 minutes in the Matrix before I decided to just end the stream and not subject anyone to that mess that was on the screen. And when I came back to the Matrix, at first I thought I would just not bother trying to get through it because there's absolutely nothing that is worth playing through this. But I resolved myself to figuring out how to beat it once I looked up the God Mode cheat for the game. I don't know why when you activate God Mode it says Holy up there at the the top of the screen, but there it is. With God Mode enabled, the threat of dying at any moment and losing so much precious progress is negated, so you as a player are able to just take your time and slowly weave your way through the mazes and try to figure out the sometimes strange moon logic of how all these stupid fucking switches open up the environment. That was really, truly the only way I was able to withstand this mission, and even then, the toll I took wasn't mental so much as it was physical. Even just looking at the footage I have of this mission, editing it all together, my eyes hurt. Someone must have understood how painful all of this was. Someone, and I'm also sure that they were outvoted by the rest of the team. All right, so you, you've you seen enough of this bullshit to basically understand that this is a nightmare. So let's get back to the regular bits of the game. All right, so in typical tech war fashion, once you've placed all the tech lord symbols, you're dumped back into the real world with zero explanation. All right, actually, there is a, a brief Shatner clip telling you to go stop the Matrix node from broadcasting worldwide, but I forgot to record footage during that part, and I wasn't about to go all the way back through the Matrix just to go and record that. The level we're dropped into is the single most straightforward out of them all. No key cards, just a few goons, a bunch of holographic versions of the former tech lords we've already busted, and a vault door at the end of a long corridor where we take out Sunny Hokuri, one last time, and we win. <laughs> I knew you were right for the job. We've made a pretty good team. We've checked the spread of tech, at least temporarily, and put a lot of tech lords out of action. But for everyone we put away, there are at least 10 ready to take their place. Putting the tech matrix broadcast node out of action before it came online saved this city from the greatest organized threat since that nuclear bomb scare by the anti-technology terrorists back in the 90s. We don't have time to relax, though. There are still lots of other tech lords throughout the world that need to be put away, and we're the ones to do it. By the way, I've convinced the parole officials to let you stay out of the freezer as long as you continue to work for me. Maybe you can clear your name after all. How about it? Do we have a deal? And then, just like that, we get an early 90s CGI ending cutscene, which is basically just a flyover of the city, with a really sweet techno track that absolutely does not fit with the rest of the game's vibe, and then we roll credits. Oh, and when the credits are done, we're just dumped back to Windows with a game-completed prompt, which is 
<laughs> okay, cool, thanks guys. Tech War is as astoundingly bad as bad games get. On one hand, this isn't really necessarily bad in a way that makes it terrible. For the most part, Tech War is just a piece of interactive software that exists. Calling it a game is too generous. There's a whisper of gameplay. There's a hint of game design. And yes, you can technically play Tech War, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like you're playing it so much as you're just passing through, shooting at things that prevent you from moving further. If that's the definition of a game, then sure, it's a game, I guess. Earlier, I compared it to a screensaver, which I think is much more fitting. Tech War is less of a game and more something to interact with, pass the time with. Take the subway, walk through the streets, find the key cards, kill a tech lord, talk to Bill Shatner. The Matrix is the only part of this game that exhibits any semblance of frontal lobe activity, but it's so horribly done, so woefully offensive, that it isn't even worth playing. Hey, hey, you, you kids remember Lego Island? Tech War is like if Lego Island was cyberpunk and not fun. There you go, there's a tagline. Still, I did have some fun with it, if only to just take in how ridiculously jank and broken everything is here in Tech War. And to that extent, it's mildly charming even. Like, oh look, it's trying. That's so cute. I even kind of want to like it just because there's something different going on. Something interesting and unique with the subway hub and the traveling between stops in order to find your objectives. Even the non-lethal approach is applaudable. Like there are actual ideas underneath the jank here that are dare I say it, a little ahead of their time. But at the end of the day, this is not an experience that is worth your time, your or your money, or your sanity. The execution of even the best ideas that this game has is done so poorly that it's mind-boggling, and the execution of the worst ideas that it has is, frankly, offensive and insulting. Tech War, as a game, scores a 3 out of 10, and as an experience, it will linger longer than you could possibly imagine. Which, if you think about it, is exactly how it should be. Listen, hear me out for a moment. Recently, William Shatner went out into space. He said it was one of the most terrifying realizations he's ever had. He expected hope and optimism about the start of a journey to a new frontier. And instead, he saw how alone we are in this universe. How Earth is our home, but it's a home floating in a deep, endless void of chaos and nothingness. Captain Kirk went into space with joy in his heart and came back with nothing but terror. As of this writing, this man is 92 years old. 92! He's outlived most of the cast of the original Star Trek. He's one of the most prolific actors and creative voices of our time, with several novels, albums, TV shows, films, and podcasts under his belt. He's still putting himself out there and working on new projects, and yet... William Shatner said recently that he's worried no one will remember him. Here he is nearing the end of his life, and he's worried that no one will remember him. What I'm going to say, I say in all seriousness, and with all due respect, and without any intention of humor. No one is going to forget William Shatner. Regardless of what you think of his work, whether you gleefully mock his spoken word singing, or you sit in awe of his acting during the funeral of Spock and Wrath of Khan, or you eat up the prose of the novels his name is on. I, I put it that way because he didn't really write the Tech War novels, they were ghostwritten, but they were still his ideas. William Shatner is a man who put his heart and soul, and yes, his ego, into everything he did. And he accomplished so much that there is no way his name will be forgotten by time. Even with Tech War, a game he's only roughly associated with because it's based on a property he created, even this is something that reaches forward into new territory with ideas that have a semblance of originality, despite drastically failing in the execution. We might mock this game, and rightfully so, but we will never forget it. Not anymore. William Shatner, no matter what, even if all of your projects aren't the pinnacle of creative quality, they exist. They are there. And we will never forget them. And to that extent, I salute you, sir. Alright kids, I am very grateful for your company on this journey. Between the live stream I did and making this video, there has been such a wonderful outpouring of community curiosity and support for me to somehow play through this and maintain my sanity. And I'm pretty sure I did, I think. But the tech war, at last, is finally over. Hopefully the footage I used didn't cause any migraines, and if it did, go take a few moments away from your screen. Lie down in a dark room after you take some ibuprofen, let your eyes rest a while, and of course, make sure that you stay hydrated. Stay safe, kids. I'll see you next time.